Hey. Hey. How's it going? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> One of those, huh? Yeah. Good evening, good evening. Let's go ahead and get started. Thank y'all for coming out in the cold, rainy, nasty day. And um, good to see everybody. Let's start off with our prayer time. And I got a whole slew of folks to pray for. Got, I felt like today just more, more and more kept coming in. So I'll list, list some and y'all can add to it if we need to add to it. So um, let's see here. So you got Mr. J. Beaver, Alicia's brother. Recently had shoulder surgery, but he's been in the ER today thinking it might be kidney stones. So I want to lift him up. And then Mark Shields has a procedure going on Friday. I want to pray for him. And Boyd Harris has a procedure with doing something to his eyelids or above his eyes or, or something, or one of them at least. So we want to lift him up. And then Lucille Moody has pneumonia. So we want to pray for her. And Suzanne McLeod. Uh, she didn't say exactly what it is, but said she's on antibiotics, so some kind of virus or something, I'm sure. Okay, and then Scott Thomas is Alicia's nephew that had to have heart surgery last week and still not, not recovering real well, having trouble with pain medicines and him coming out without having to be on a breathing thing. So, so worried about pneumonia in his lungs right now. So definitely want to throw a big one up for, for him. And then Bobby Ward, which is Miss Ann, Ann Moody's sister in Georgia, uh, having some issues going downhill seeming. I did talk to... Uh, we went to see Joel and Shelby the other day. They, they're feeling better, but he's still kind of weak. They're trying to figure out you know, to get his medicines right or if he's eventually going to need a pacemaker or something. They don't know yet. They're still trying to figure it out. But he feels okay, just kind of kind of weak right now. So, um, And then I talked to Pat Griffin the other day. And she's feeling better from her COVID, but still tired and those of you who've had it know that it can kind of take some time to get your strength built back up after after having it so we want to remember them um let's see charlie mcduffie jr that's um daniel mcduffie's brother i believe they said is having chemo treatments but also dealing with other, other infection stuff so we want to remember him as well. So any any others that y'all want to especially lift up or add to our list? Yeah. Grandma. Yeah, grandma, Jennifer's mom and and dealing with some stuff. So okay, thank you. Anybody else? All right. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to meet together and to study your word together and pray together and fellowship together and just share our lives together. I thank you for these that uh, have come out tonight and others that will be watching online or will tune in online at some other at a later time. Just, we just thank you for the opportunity to be together uh, as your people, as family, as church family, uh, to uh, encourage each other and to pray for each other in the study. So we do lift up all of them on our prayer list. You know all of them already. You know everybody that's in our hearts and minds already, whether they're listed or not, whether they've been spoken out loud or not. You, you know all of our concerns. Uh, you know who we've been praying for in our private times. And so we, we lift all of those up, but especially want to, to lift up by name these that, that have mentioned tonight with Jay Beaver, uh, dealing with recovering from a shoulder, but also might be kidney stones. We just pray for relief uh, and comfort and healing for him. And we pray for Mark Shields getting ready for his procedure on Friday, that you would strengthen his body and, and help everything to go well, be with his doctors that, that are doing it. 
and just help him to, to do every move just right. And um, for his time of healing afterwards, that, that he would have a, a quick and easy recovery. And then pray for Mr. Boyd with his, his eye procedure Friday. Just the same thing, that you would strengthen his body, that, that you would help everything to go well, that his recovery would, would go well. And we pray for Miss Lucille uh, with pneumonia. We pray for healing, that, that you would help her to feel better soon and very soon. And same for Suzanne, whatever she's dealing with, that, that you would help her to feel better soon and very soon. We pray for Charlie McDuffie. Uh, junior with this the, the treatments he's having for cancer and uh, the, the infections he's been dealing with just pray for healing for him and strength for him and encouragement and hope and provision for his him and his family and we pray for scott thomas uh, that we thank you that the that the surgery went well and that they found found the problem in the first place and knew what to do about it we just pray for his uh, recovery right now we pray for his lungs that you would strengthen his lungs you would keep pneumonia away that you would help them to monitor his pain levels and uh, that he would be able to, to start a healthy recovery soon and uh, we pray for ann's sister miss bobby uh, and all that she's dealing with right now just for for strength and peace and comfort and healing and we pray for our church in general uh, I'm sure a lot of our folks are dealing with with various things, including illness and including other stuff too. So we just pray that you would be with each and every one of our our family members, and that, that you would provide for all of their needs. And most importantly, Lord, we we pray that you would help us to just have a closer and closer and closer and closer connection to you, and uh, that, that our relationship with you would be. Uh, vibrant and growing and so help help us to sense your presence here with us tonight and help us to sense you speaking to us truth and principles through your word tonight uh, help us to just uh, discern the truth that you want us to to know about tonight and so we thank you lord lord for your love and your grace and uh, we hope that everything that we say and do in our time together in general brings you glory and lifts your name high. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay. Got a, a couple of things I'd like to do reminders about before we get started. One is the shoeboxes for the Kentucky schools that we're helping Emmaus with. A bunch of boxes got going. We started out with 50, so I, I would guess maybe half of them got taken Sunday for folks to fill out. But... Uh, if you want to do it that way, you're welcome to do that way. Uh, or if you'd like to just bring in supplies that we can pack them with, we're going to have a packing party on Wednesday night, March 8th. So instead of our normal Bible study, we'll do a park packing party back in the back part of the building somewhere. Uh, so there's a, a list. It'll be in the bulletin. It'll be in the newsletter. Uh, but I also printed some up both, in both of these four years. If you want to grab a list, it's got some of the supplies that will be collecting for that uh, and then also uh, this coming Sunday we're going to have our celebration time for our anniversary our 150th anniversary which is back December 23rd so we're going to have a guest speaker and then we're going to have a chili cook-off luncheon right, right after church and hopefully those plaques uh, are going to be ready and then also the directories hopefully are going to be ready um, by Sunday so a lot, a lot going on this Sunday you don't want to miss that and then if, if you're a fellow in the church, I'm trying to put together a time for us to go to some kind of men's conference in March. Uh, I pulled out two that I'm familiar with that I'd like for us to consider. One is in Lynchburg, uh, which is a good little drive and we're going to have to spend the night. Uh, and the other one is in Rocky Mount, which is a little less expensive and, and probably doable to go and come back in the same or in the same day, both of those days. So. If you're interested, let me know so we can get registered. Okay, so uh, as you know, we've been going through our doctrine of creation or doctrine of origins for a good while now. Um, our truth statements about creation and just kind of help us get the gist of it in our head. Uh, nothing just happened, God created it all. Uh, therefore, I have a purpose in this world. The reason I exist is to glorify God. 
So after we looked at the world's favorite uh, concepts of evolution, uh, the compromised theistic evolution, uh, we now are looking at the Bible's account of creation in Genesis 1 and 2, uh, which is that, that God did it on purpose. He divinely, supernaturally, all-powerfully made it just how he wanted it to be. And that he was involved from, from beginning to end with, with how it's going and how it still continues uh, today. And we read through the Genesis account in Genesis 1. We kind of did a summary of events from those first six days of creation. Uh, we looked at some other scriptural references about uh, the creator or about creation. And then we started digging into some truths or some foundational principles uh, that come from creation. We talked about how there was a beginning to time and creation. Uh, we talked about how God already existed because God is eternal. Uh, God created everything out of nothing. Uh, creation was done in proper order and uh, with order. Um, God is spirit. He's an ever pre he is ever-present or omnipresent. Uh, we talked about how um, God created with his word and how there's power and purpose in his word. And we talked about how God made the light on day one. Uh, well, how the days of creation were made up of literal 24-hour days, just like today. How God created the universe approximately about 6,000 years ago when you uh, add up the time frames, lifespans of the people that are mentioned in the Bible. And then we talked about how the earth was created from the outset, even before people were put here, uh, to sustain life, which shows that God is an organized and orderly and thoughtful and caring provider. So that's that's a whole lot that we've already covered, but let's cover a, a few more tonight. And so the next one we'll look at is how uh, God got it right the first time. God made all things just the way he wanted them. He made everything and everyone just right. He purposefully made the plants and the trees according to their various kinds. He purposely made the sea animals and the birds according to their various kinds. He purposely made the land animals according to their various kinds. And he purposely made people as people uh, from the, the get-go on day six. And so uh, after those six days of creation, each of those days it says that God looked back at what he had done and said it was good. He, he's, he's happy with his creation. And after the sixth day, he said, oh, it's very good. And so creation is good or was good. In his work of creation, he got it right the first time. He didn't need to improve on the originals. Therefore, there was no need for evolution or for evolving like, like, that, like that theory proposes. And so God created it all right the first time, and it was good. And next, uh, God is an artistic and creative God who loves variety. Uh, he wasn't content with just one kind of plant or one kind of tree. He made many different kinds of plants and trees. Uh, God wasn't satisfied with just one kind of sea animal or one kind of bird. He made many different kinds of sea animals and many different kinds of birds. Uh, he wasn't uh, happy with just one kind of land animal. He made many different kinds of land animals. And God doesn't want all people to be the same. He didn't want us to just be clones. Uh, he, he didn't want us to just be robots. He literally custom makes each person to be different. No two people, not even identical twins, are just alike. He uh, made everyone different. So don't you know that, that in the beginning, when he was creating these things on the days of creation, don't you know that God had fun creating the different plants and the different animals, giving roses their beauty and their scent, giving redwood trees their height, uh, giving the octopus its eight arms, giving the swan its long neck, 
and giving the zebra its stripes. Now, don't you know that God smiled when he gave you your blue eyes or your little pug nose or your big feet? Now, don't you know that God enjoyed making you and knowing what you would develop into as you grew? And so the great variety of plants, the great variety of animals, the great variety uh, of people uh, or the uniqueness of each person show us, one, how great our creator really is. He's not limited by anything, especially not a lack of creativity. Uh, and God's imagination and creativity are endless and limitless. So God is an artistic and creative creator who loves variety. Uh, we kind of already covered this a little bit and also in uh, other messages as well, but all three persons of the Trinity were involved in the work of creation. And sometimes with a simple reading, you just kind of give God the Father the credit for it. But really, when you read it closely and read other passages in the Bible, you see that all three, Father, Son, and Spirit, were involved in the work of creation. Uh, in Genesis 1:26. Uh, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Why is he saying us? Why is he saying our? It's because it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit uh, pulling it off. Uh, the noun us and the adjectives our in this passage are undeniably plural. They're in the plural form. Bible scholar Warren Wiersbe noted this. He said, in the councils of eternity, the Godhead determined the creative world that would include humans made in the image of God. The Father was involved in creation, but so were the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, we see the word God used 32 times. Now, interestingly, in that passage, uh, the Hebrew word that is used to refer to God, Elohim, I'm sure you've probably heard that, Elohim, one of the names of God, is actually a plural noun that is typically used with singular verbs and adjectives. Why? Because God is three in one. One God, but three persons that make up that one God. Uh, listen to the following Bible passages that reveal how each member of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, uh, was involved in the creation events. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God, Elohim, that plural noun for God, uh, his name, created the heavens and the earth. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8.6. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came, and for whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, and through whom we live. Uh, Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For in him, Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In Genesis 1-2, Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God, or God the Holy Spirit, was hovering over the waters. So we see uh, the Bible makes it clear that all three persons of the Trinity uh, were involved in the work of creation. And then we'll start this concept tonight and then stop here and then pick up with more on it next week. Uh, but man is the crown of creation. Uh, God custom makes each person, people are more valuable to God than any other creature or object. So people are the crown of creation. Uh, people are God's greatest masterpiece, which is pretty impressive in itself because the rest of God's creation 
is pretty impressive. Now, when you think about the whole universe, all these planets and universes or, or galaxies and, and uh, stars and suns and, and all of that, and then mountains and oceans and animals and all, it's all pretty impressive, but it really, it was all to get to us. We are the crown uh, of his creation. We are kind of the point of his creation. So let's think about how did God create man? And so we, we've seen from the past, the first several days, that God said, he, cre he said, let there be, and there was this, or there was that, or there was this, or there was that. But it was different when it came to how he made man and woman. Now Genesis 2, 7, New Century Version, then the Lord God took dust from the ground and formed a man from it. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nose, and the man became a living person. So you think about that, uh, whereas all the rest of it was just God's word. He spoke it and it happened. Man, the first man, God got his hands dirty. God got his hands involved. He, he uh, gathered some dirt and he, he made a model and then he breathed life into it. And so it was more intimate. It was more personal. It was more, uh, more hands-on, more intentional, more effort, more energy, um, more work uh, for him to make man than it took for him to, to do everything else with just his word. More personal, intimate involvement. And then Genesis 2, 21 and 22, New Century Version. So the Lord God caused the man to sleep very deeply. And while he was asleep, God removed one of the man's ribs. Then God closed up the man's skin at the place where he took the rib. The Lord God used the rib from the man to make a woman. And then he brought the woman to the man. So once again, uh, it was more intimate. It was more personal. It was more hands-on, more involved. Uh, that, that he um, pulled out a rib out of Adam and turned it into a woman. And so it was more, more creative, more unique, more hands-on uh, than all the rest of the things that he made in creation. So just like a potter takes a piece of clay and molds and shapes it into something, um, a bowl or, or a piece of pottery or something else. Uh, God took some dirt and meticulously molded it into the shape of a man. Then with his life-giving breath, voila, the dirt miraculously became a man, Adam, the first man. Now then from one of Adam's ribs, God turned around and custom made Eve as well. So God intentionally and purposefully custom designs each of us. No two people are just alike, not even twins, not just alike. Uh, so listen to David's prayer, King David's prayer in Psalm 139, 13 to 15, New Living Translation. And this gives a kind of a poetic take on God's personal involvement in creating people. And he said, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's from the new NIV version, that section. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. So David, King David had a, uh, sure it wasn't a biological kind of knowledge, but had a, had a concept of God making each person in the womb. Um, so while God made the rest of creation with a word, he made us from the dust of the ground and he, from a rib and he breathed life into us. Uh, why? Why? Uh, from the personal investment of time and effort that God used to create man and woman, we learn that people, that you and I, that people 
are more valuable to God than any other creature. At the tip of your fingers, you have something that no one else in the world has or ever will have, your fingerprints. If someone finds your fingerprints in a room, they know that you've been there, if they know how to read fingerprints, obviously. Uh, but your one-of-a-kind fingerprints give you away. Uh, being created in God's image means that God's fingerprints are all over our lives. His heart, his character, his values, his person are all seen in who we are. We have his fingerprints all over us. So listen to these words from Stephen Curtis Chapman's song, Fingerprints of God. Now, the person in the mirror doesn't look like the magazine. Oh, but when I look at you, it's clear to me that I can see the fingerprints of God. When I look at you, I can see the fingerprints of God. And I know it's true, you're a masterpiece that all creation quietly applauds and you're covered with the fingerprints of God. And it's because you were personally and intentionally made just like you are because God wanted you to be you. And you're not like anybody else all through and through. You are you, and God made you that way. So the immediate implication of each person being intentionally custom-made by God for his purposes is that all people are valuable. And this world desperately needs to hear that lesson again today. Especially, especially, especially the unborn in the womb. Oh, how many children, how many unborn babies have been murdered uh, in the name of choice? Uh, because the, the mom or the dad has no value for this child or has more value or more, more concern for their own comfort, their own situation, their own well-being than for this child that God has created in their womb. What a sad lot that millions and millions and millions of babies have been murdered um, through this, this thing of abortion. And so, but it's not just that. It's not just that. Murder rates or violence rates or selfishness or greed or meanness or you name it all stems from the lack of valuing the people around us. And that is where our world is today. And because... Ever, not everybody, obviously, you're not, but so many people struggle with selfishness uh, instead of valuing others. So all people, all people, all colors of people, all races of people, all cultures of people, all people, all, all two genders of people are valuable. And we need to treat people as if they're valuable. And therefore, we must honor the sanctity and value of all human life and protect it at all costs. So we'll stop there for tonight. Next week, we're going to talk about some of the implications or, or, or the meaning of being created in the image of God. What, what does it mean uh, that we are created as people in the image of God? So we'll, we'll look at that next week. But let's stop there for tonight. Any thoughts, any words of wisdom, any uh, truths that you'd like to share or any experiences you'd like to share uh, before we wrap it up with a prayer? I don't understand how people tend to think that all of the variety, all of the different plants, animals, trees, every person's different. Just this whole whole creation how could that have come from accident an accident or, or, from a 
something exploding. Yeah. I mean, why yeah. would not everything have been the same if it there, came from the same There place? are so, 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 so many clues of order, of, of purpose in this world, of design, intentional design, that, that really, I mean, this might be too simplistic to say, but uh, I think to, to deny that is basically just because you reject that. It's not because you can't see that. It's because you don't want to have the implications that we belong to God, that we belong to somebody who made us, and so that we are answerable to someone who made us. I think that's the whole heart of where evolution came from is the, trying to reject God's authority in our lives. But, you know, the world has a way, the devil has a way of blinding us, mm -hmm. has a way of deceiving us, has a way of, of duping us into who knows what all people believe with that. Uh, but you're right. Just the, the beauty of it all and the, the way various systems work together, the way our, the systems of our human body work together, the, the way the universe was built with just the right distances and the right tilts and right rotations and all of that stuff just is amazing. God is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody else? All right. Let's close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus, dear Holy Spirit, you are awesome. Uh, bottom line, when we think about creation, when we look at the, this beautiful, awesome creation around us, it, it reflects, it has your fingerprints all over it. Not just us as, as your crown of creation, but uh, everything, everything has your fingerprints on it. And so we, we thank you that you have given us eyes to see, uh, that you've given us hearts and minds uh, to recognize um, your design behind it all, your purpose behind it all. And we, we thank you that more than that, <clears throat> more than uh, just giving us some kind of clue that there was a grand designer behind it all, you in time revealed yourself to us. And not only did you want us to, to, to know about this great maker of ours, you wanted us to have a personal relationship with you. And so you revealed yourself to us personally and, and very, very, very personally when you sent God the Son, yourself, into this world as a human and to live with us and to live like us, except you never sinned. You lived in that perfect unity with the Father uh, and the Spirit, even while you walked this earth. And so thank you for revealing yourself to us. Even more than that, thank you for um, dealing with our sin problem, uh, that, that we couldn't live in, in a perfect state like you. Uh, we have all chosen uh, and fallen uh, to sin and, and broken that perfect relationship with you. And, and in your love, you died for our sin. And you defeated sin. You defeated death, the, the, the ultimate penalty for our sin. You defeated it when you died on the cross. And you were buried and you rose from the dead. Um, you overcame and you made it possible through, through our faith in you and through your giving us your righteousness that we can overcome too. That we can be with you forever and ever and ever. So we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you especially for your love. And so help us to not take it for granted. You know, we, we so easily do get caught up in our routines and caught up in our, uh, in our goals and caught up in our burdens that we often take you for granted. And help, help us to just give ourselves constant reminders of who you are and what you've done and what you've promised to do and um, help us to just um, praise you and thank you every single day and all through the days because you are worthy 
of our worship. You are worthy of our gratitude. So we thank you. We love you. Uh, be with each of us until we can meet together again. Keep us safe and help us to live with purpose. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Hope you have a great rest of the week. We'll see you Sunday, Sunday, Sunday.